The Potaka Division of the Court of Appeal is yet to give its decision on a motion filed by the Chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Prince Uche Sekundus. Sekundus has urged the court to suspend the October 30 and 31 National Convention of the party and to declare him the right person to preside over the exercise. Well, joining us to break this down is political analyst Biodum Shomi. Thank you very much, Mr. Shomi, for joining us. It's my pleasure. Great. Here we are again talking about the infighting within the PDP. It seems to be uh, deepening every single day. Um, second news is asking the court to suspend the October um, 30 and 31 National Convention, just as I said earlier on, uh, to declare him the right person to preside over the exercise. Not only that, now the court has fixed October 28 to hear the rule on the motion for an interim injunction by Secondus against the PDP and others. Now, um, what do we presume is going on here? Because one minute, uh, the party is saying they do not necessarily need to... Um, um, they do not necessarily need the party chairman um, to conduct the com uh, convention as it was. Uh, but now he's saying that he doesn't even want the convention to hold except he presides over it. So it looks like the PDP is speaking from both sides of its mouth or maybe it does need to ha have its house in order. Yeah, well, what um, in the first instance, what Secondos is trying to um, achieve is to establish through the courts that... Um, he has a valid claim. He still has a valid claim to the chairmanship of the uh, PDP. We should not forget the shenanigans or behind the, all the political death moves you know, made uh, to get rid of him from office, um, one way or the other. Uh, they tried to get him to resign to be, he didn't. Uh, the party eventually you know, get, got factionalized because um, there were two cases in court. Now, secondos position is very clear that the PDP uh, convention should not have held because he should have preside, presided you know, as the chairman. And therefore, since he has filed the case in court, um, all parties to the suit you know, are expected to exercise restraint, not to do anything that would uh, uh, make a put, uh, bring up back a fait accompli on the court. That is to render the court, you know, uh, uh, interrogation of his case, you no, know, uh, useless. Uh, that is the point which um, Secondo is doing. But he, I felt um, he made a mistake initially by not going for an interlocutory injunction to restrain the PDP from organizing any convention uh, and restrain, you know, the, the caretaker chairman and all. He didn't do that. He's just filing the injunction. So there was nothing stopping the PDP from going ahead. You know the way they have gone ahead because there was no injunction even though all parties are expected to exercise restraint when the case is involved and you have been sacked so mm -hmm. that is uh, the fact of the matter what we see going on now is uh, in the play of different forces there are those who wants to destroy the pdp and makes it so uh, weak uh, before the next election you know some of them may even be people active in apc there are also those who, within the PDP, are just, you know, to position themselves for either the chairmanship of the party or uh, eventually for the presidential ticket of the party. We have heard of what um, the current chairman said, that look, he will be prepared to resign if a Northerner emerges as um, the presidential candidate. So there are a lot of um, um, uh, political death moves going on. Mm. But if Secondos is found to be right by the court, they may as well set aside that convention. That is the risk which the PDP is taking currently. I spoke with the Deputy National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, if I'm not mistaken, last week or two weeks ago on the same issue. And I did ask him why... Um, Uche Sekundus' tenure um, expires sometime in December, and then they're fixing um, a national convention in October. And he said, well, that the party, um, it doesn't matter, whoever emerges and the National Working Committee will wait till December for swearing in, or they may determine uh, if Sekundus stays or goes. And now you've told me that um, there should have been an inter uh, interlocutory, um, just an injunction of sorts to stop them from having that that uh, convention but they they seem to have it all figured out but again 
if secondus, I mean, whether this case, whether this case is in court or not, if secondus, um, knowing that in Nigeria we really do not respect, you know, court orders, we pick and choose which one to, um, you know, adhere to. If this is, if this plays out the way it does play out, does that mean that? The new National Working Committee that emerges come October, um, the end of this month, might have to kick um, secondus out if they choose. Yeah, it depends on the on the on on the way the judge uh, will read what has happened, and it also depends on the evidence presented to the courts. Uh, the PDP risk, you know, one thing which is certain, which is because a case is in court, he has filed a case in court. And the PDP has been served properly. Um, the fact of the matter is uh, they are expected not to do anything that will put a fait accompli before the court. They are expected not to render the interrogation of the court, you know, a useless exercise. So therefore, the risk is that the judge, in his view, may choose to say whatever they have done since the case was filed in court, you know, uh, uh, render it a knowledge. And the other side of it is that the judge might take a view and say, hang on, there is no injunction filed by you at the time, by secondos, at the time when um, those processes were taking place. And therefore, the hacks had been completed before you filed the judge. And uh, because of that, the judge may as well, you know, refuse, you know, to, um, to, to uphold the submissions of secondos lawyers, you know, by you know, disregarding or nullifying the, uh, the, the the convention. So it's two ways. It depends on how the judge read it. And since all the facts are not very clear um, presently to me, the papers, the evidence put before the court. So we can only assume that there's a risk um, of a, the court nullifying it. And mm -hmm. it's also likely that the court may not even agree with secondos to start mm -hmm. and uphold its removal. So these are issues which the PDP needs to ponder about. It brings about a period of uncertainty, particularly for the major opposition party in Nigeria, who by now should be getting set you know, uh, to get his ass together with a view to challenge the agency. But it's quite unfortunate that in this terrible situation, and um, because of that, um, is not enhancing democracy. The crisis within the PDP itself is diminishing democracy. Because we are not having a vibrant opposition to the ruling party. Uh, it, it's interesting to also note, um, you know, the movements within the party. We've seen the former speaker, um, uh, former Senate president, I beg your pardon, Bukola Saraki, um, you know, um, making a lot of moves and do, you know, having reconciliation meetings here and there. We've also seen a, uh, an Atiku Abubakar who's still very much interested in the race, even though recently there's been um, you know, a suit against him uh, uh, challenging his eligibility um, to um, you know, run for presidency. We've seen a lot of big wigs making big moves. There, there's also been a list re released of people who they think within the PDP might be interested in not just the leadership of the party, but flying the presidential fl um, fl uh, flag for you know, the party. I'm asking you because you, of course, were analyzing this issue. Um, could this also be the reason why the position of secondus is threatened? Um, but with looking at the body language of uh, Bukola Saraki, is there any form of reconciliation that can address the situation that the party is facing right now? Um, and how soon can they put themselves together, get their acts together? Um, to be able to face an APC, which also might be having its own problems, but seemed more um, ready than the PDP. Yes. Um, well, when this problem started, there were so many people keenly interested, uh, you know, that for the sake of democracy and for the sake of having a very viable alternative at all times in any democratic set. The PDP needs to get their hacks together. Um, I remembered um, there were a lot of discussions about the uh, South South, no, the Southern Governor's position on um, Grayson and the position of the Northern Governors and how it cut across you know, uh, the, 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 the two polit major political parties, that is APC PDP. So it seems those parties were divided along that line. 
If you remember, uh, Wiki, the PDP governor, was also part of um, the Southern Governor's Federation. So also um, Lagos State Governor and you know, all APC governors. On the side of the North also, you also have PDP and APC working together on those agendas. So what that means is the Southern governors are taking a position, which includes the PDP government, to say that we will not accept we, well, they, they are not saying that. They are advocating that the next president should come from the South. So given that situation, they are diametrically opposed to their colleagues from the North, who are also from the same political party. So this is part of the things, you know, the game going on. A second loss was simply removed for, majorly for one reason, for, because of um, um, the need for those who are interested in the uh, presidential race, you know, to ensure that they have a chairmanship candidate who, or a chairman who will do their bidding. Because the chairman in PDP or APC, you know, the, the chairman is very powerful. They, they can influence a lot of things. So we have seen the, the, the game going on behind. Nobody is thinking about democracy currently. Nobody is thinking about the fate of PDP. The people currently, you know, doing what they're doing, are doing it because of their own personal ambition. And that is what is guiding them. Now they've removed seconders. Seconders are challenging it up. They are making moves to resolve some of these issues behind the scene. But I doubt whether those issues will be solved easily. Because there will always be a third force. There will always be a third party involvement in their own internal language for obvious reasons. Um, because you don't expect the APC to go to bed and allow PDP to ignite. Is it? Um, the both parties are working very hard. We have had Saraki also saying some APC bid weeks will soon be joining PDP. So both parties are working very hard to undermine each other simply because all the parties are not ideologically oriented. And it's easier for you to sleep in the APC and wake up in PDP, you know, the next day. So because of that, uh, we have this um, uh, flow of movements, you know, from one party to the other. And that is what is going on currently. Nobody is thinking about democracy. Nobody is thinking about the fate of PDP as a vibrant opposition party currently, or the need for PDP to regain power. What is at play currently is the interest of candidates who are interested in the presidential race. And that, of course, leaves the question of uh, to us, uh, the people who are watching, if we do even understand what's happening, because a lot more people might not necessarily understand what's going on, or that these politicians are more interested in their personal gains as opposed to what we need uh, as a people. So where does that leave us as the electorates? We vote for whoever the parties throw up. At the end of the day, it's a case between the devil and the deep blue sea. There, there are a lot of contradictions which um, our political process is faced with. Um, many of them can be resolved in restructure, but um, with the body language of the presidency and the political parties, it does not seem they are so much interested in restructure, uh, in the sense that all the political parties are in an umbrella currently you know, try, trying to um, to, to slug it out on who becomes the next governor of an ambassador. Uh, there is no party who is taking a position to say that, look, um, until we restructure, um, we are not going to get involved in this uh, process. That does not mean that that process will go on seamlessly. Um, I really doubt that. Otherwise, federal government would not be talking about uh, militarizing the political space in an mm -hmm. and I hope, you know, bound that if government is not released, they will uh, disrupt that uh, very process. So what, what you see is the nature of the politics we play in our country, where the interests of politicians first, before they think about the political party and before they think about Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We need to restructure this country. Um, if we don't get the structure right, uh, we would always have this form of challenges. You still have the security challenge that um, how do we intend to resolve that? How do we intend to manage that situation? Um, it's not yet clear. How, mm. would, how would you get um, youth workers to come out and vote in elections or to come out and participate as um, ad hoc staff? Why not? No one knows uh, what would happen. So mm. the uh, democracy is very fragile and um, is faced with so many challenges we can imperil it. I hope not, but the bottom line is the political parties 
have not gotten their acts together. Both the PDP and APC, okay. um, inclusive. Uh, the, the major parties have their own internal wranglings. You know, they, in some cases, almost factionalized, semi-factionalized. And then uh, both parties are not, you know, meeting the needs or expectations of the people in terms of um, their performance. Mm -hmm. So but currently, we need to wait and see how the whole thing develops. All right. Well, be able to show with me as a political analyst. Always a pleasure to have you speak with us. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Thank you. All right. We'll take a short break now to see what Nigerians have to say about the accusations that were laid yesterday by the federal government on NSAS protesters and IPOP members on the destruction of properties in the southeast and the southwest, including the Obas Palace. Stay with us. What does the IPOP member have to do with the uh, destruction of properties? To me, IPOP member has nothing to do with, to do with this. What result, uh, resulted to that uh, destruction of property was as a result of the killing of people that were protesting. Who were prote and protest is, 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 is their right which they're supposed to exercise. But due to the way government did, uh, were doing it, that's the reason why it now escalated. I did it, supposed not to escalate. For the first, second, third day, for a few days they did it, before that day, nothing like that. There was no destruction. But because of the killing that they killed some of them, that was why it happens like that. IPOP member has nothing to do with it. He has nothing to do with IPOP member and he has nothing to do with it. It was not even the protesters' intention to do that. We are all aware when the answer started, it started as a protest, peaceful protest, without any violence. The people only gathered at the Toge protested the police brutality, which was peaceful, until the government came in with shooting by the soldier, by killing people. So that was actually what escalated to what? To the crisis. So if you actually look at it, it was not the youth, or the crisis was not as a result of the answer. The uh, crisis was as a result of the pro reaction, reaction to the action of the government by killing innocent people. So when killing have been used, actually you are going to un uh, understand that yes, other team might likely uh, involve. So there was a lot of people that hijacked it because now it become a crisis between government and the people. So it's not actually the inside. The people that actually escalate the problem is the government. Just the same way you see the issue of, uh, what do you call it, Kanu. Kanu was no issue in Nigeria until government begins to promote Kanu. If you look at it, IPOP was no issue. Nobody knew about IPOP until the federal government itself promotes. So the issue is that the government is the problem of the, is the actual causes of every crisis in Nigeria. One of these days, you and I, everybody, are going to stand before the throne of judgment and explain what we did on it one of these days. Take that one first. Second, how can I pop and answer uh, protesters? How the God to go to an Obas Palace? Kabiesi, Alayelua, Eke Joriza. I don't believe that. I think that is just funny because if you look at the NSAS, the origins of the NSAS protest and everything, it was born out of everything that the federal government failed to do. So what you just saw is just a violent reaction of people who have been going through a lot. So you cannot attribute what happened to the Obas Palace and every other facility to IPOP. IPOP have their own grounds or other grievances against the government and they know how they want to settle it. So if you are going to channel your uh, accusation, the government should first ask itself this question, why in the world was there an NSAS movement? Why in the world was there a protest? And why all that destruction? If they can answer that question, that's it. But as far as I'm concerned, it had nothing to do with IPOP. It had nothing to do with NSAS protest. It just as a result of government's failure to do the needful, to do what is right. When the government fails the citizens, that's their reward. Have a nice day. Well, there's nothing more to add. I want to thank you for being part of the conversation tonight. We'll be back tomorrow on Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Cole.